Let's make sure we got everything going. You guys should have been long on crude on uh, the retest long off the control point. Hit the first target. So 50% of your position should be off. All right, here we go. Let's go into crude oil. The first thing we do, guys and gals, what I post through the room is our methodology. If you haven't visited uh, daytradingthefutures.com, please, um, at your leisure, uh, read my PDF. I got tons and tons of examples on trade setups on various different markets. The system works on all futures, stocks, currency, right across the board. So it's the same exact setup every single day. It's been working for 31 years exactly the same way. So uh, please, at your, at your, uh, have, you have a chance, check that out, and you guys can uh, read the PDF. Below that, um, uh, right above the picture when I was in the Las Vegas trade show, I was going over the methodology just this last year. I've got a video on how to buy and sell ABC longs or ABC shorts right off of the volume profiles with trend direction. So uh, play that. That's exactly what happened today. And I'm going to go over that. So let's go over today's trade setup. So daytradingthefutures.com is very imperative. Play that short video. I go over several examples. And then the PDF will get your uh, mind right and your head straight on how we do this. We have three charts we look at every day in the room. No matter what market you look at, uh, we go a left to right analysis. We go left to right, meaning the first two charts are going to set the trade up. And the far right chart is going to show us the buy or sell imbalance between the bid and the ask at the inflection point when we want to buy and sell. We do not go right to left. We do not look at market delta first. That's the far right gray chart. That is what we look at last. We don't care about market imbalances unless we're on market profile. Our whole methodology in this room, if you have to sum up what we do in less than five seconds, we find trend direction. And then we take ABC longs or ABC shorts into market profile levels, and we let market delta pop us in with an order of balance. That's exactly what we do. It's been working for 31 years. We continue to do it um, in the room. So let's take a look at the, uh, the, uh, at the support and resistance of what happened this morning. I'm going to go over the next setups that we're looking for after I do this video. But let's, let's take a look at what we got. The first thing you do, since we do left to right analysis, we have three charts. I have a black chart. I have a white chart and I have a gray chart. The black chart, the most important thing on that chart are my solid lines. Those are volume profiles. That's taking all the hedge fund money, it's taking all the prop firms, it's taking all the amateur traders, the professional traders, the banks, etc. And it's all produced and it produces these lines. It's what it's doing is the solid blue line is what's called the control point. That's the most volume that's traded in that instrument. Now, what I do is I, I'm not like a lot of market profiles. What I do is I take out a lot of volume that's not necessary. So I take low volume areas in market profile and I eliminate them during certain sessions in the market. So I only show the pertinent session, I mean, pertinent market profiles that are necessary for us to find support and resistance. So you're not going to be able to match my market profile with the standard 30 minute market profile. To me, standard 30 minute market profiles. They're irrelevant to me because everybody uses them. And the more that the more people that use the standard market profile, the less it's going to work. So um, I do not use a standard 30-minute market profile. And so these profiles are generated, create major support and resistance. You'll probably see we got over 300 videos. You'll see some days they'll stop them to the exact tick. They're very, very accurate. So my most important are the solid lines on this black chart. That's my volume-based profile. In my volume-based profile, the blue is the control point. That is the most volume traded. And once I get the blue control point, it's going to generate this red line, which is called high value area. And it's going to generate this green solid line, which is called low value area. Now, what, I, what I'm going to do as a trader then is I'm first, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look if I'm in an up market, a down market, or a flat market. That's the first order of business when you first log in. When you first sit down at your trading desk, you got to ask yourself, whatever market you're trading, I don't care if you're trading the S&P 500 with the system, NASDAQ futures, Dow mini, soybeans, trading copper, I don't care if you're trading crude, gold, whatever you're trading, silver, it doesn't matter. You ask yourself, am I trending up, am I trending down, or am I flat or in a range market? Typically, you're going to be in three trend days, 
and you're going to be in two chop days on a week-to-week -week basis on, for example, crude oil and gold. The last two days, we've been given very easy markets to trade. If you look at the last two days, we've been in hard trend. If I, if I pull this down, Monday okay, and Tuesday, we were in hard trend. Hard trend down here. We had great ABC shorts, break retest, break retest. Yesterday, break retest, break retest. Really simple trading. I mean, just easy to get in the trades and just let them run. The easiest thing to do then, if, when you're looking at, if you're a trend or chop, look at my Magenta MA. That's the most important. Moving averages to me are worthless. You can't buy and sell off of them, and you sure as heck can't trade them by crossovers. What we can do is trend direction. They're awesome. So if you look into my, my, my standard uh, longer term MA, if it's angled down, you're simply going to look for Monday. Break, retest, short. Break, retest, short. Break, retest, short. Tuesday, yesterday. Break, retest. My LBA caught the exact swing high. Retest, short. Control point. Break, retest, short. And then when you come into an update, it's going to be the opposite. Updates. Break, retest, long. Break, retest, long. That's the natural rotation. You get back in a downtrend. Break, retest, short off of these volume profiles. So if you look at today's action, what we have is we have a minor trend up. So you see the angle of the magenta MA is angled up. So what do we want to do? We want to break retest law. So the market came down to the control point here, which is support on the, on the solid line, and gave us support. Consequently, at the same time, I have price profile. Now volume profile has been around since 1994. Price profile has been around uh, since uh, not, uh, volume profile has been around since 1994, and price profile has been around since 1995 or 85. I'm sorry. So these dots are pri are based upon more price, not volume. So what I do is I like volume profile to set the overall trade up, but if I get my price profile to overlap my volume profile, I have what's called a stacked area or confluence, and that's within a couple ticks. This is a stacked area. So not only do I got my MA as minor support. We don't use it for support resistance, but it is showing support. And we have my control point, and I got the LVA price price profile. So in this retest long, I'm looking for a positive market delta, right within. It can come within a couple ticks of that blue line. Maximum three. It's got to be at least within a couple ticks, three ticks. It can break it. It just can't close a body of the candle below it. The body of the candle cannot close below my support level or the trade is nullified. So if you're on support, you can break through it. The wicks can break through it. Wicks are where amateur traders get caught. They don't understand that price can break through support and resistance. It just can't close on an open versus closed relationship. That's where a lot of amateur traders fail. It can break through it. It's called a straddle. It just cannot close below it. Body the candle versus open versus closed. Open versus closed is more important, more important than high versus low. So then that set that trade up. My J signal, the most important way to trade this chart over here is I have also developing profile. So in this developing profile, I have HVA's red, same as over here in the black, and LVA's green. So I got these three profiles that are your most important profiles that are going to tell you if you are getting into a strong market when you break outside of HVA or weaker market when you break outside of LVA. So on this chart, on the white chart, it sets it up like it also the black chart. It clearly broke high value area. It clearly broke. Now it's allowed to break, and it told you the market is in a stronger position when it breaks outside of HVA. The first retracement, we start getting the fib dots. And I really don't pay attention to the fib dots. I don't trade on the fib dots, first of all. All the fib dots are ir irrelevant. You don't trade on the fibs. They come up when you're in an optimal Fibonacci retracement. However, I let market profile set it up first, or I don't even worry about the fib dots. Okay? It's got to break inside or outside of market profile. Then it retraces. Then if the fib dots fire, it just gives me extra confluence. So the fib dots fired off also at the control point. That gave me confluence that it broke out of my developing also. So these two charts actually feed off each other. Do you need both of them to agree? Absolutely not. I could just trade off this black chart. I could strip all these market profiles down and just trade off my solid volume profile all by itself.
But what I've done is I've added these extra profiles to give us confluence or stack levels because they are calculating different support and resistance. So when they all combine together, it gives you confluence. And what we try to do as traders then is we try to get the first retest of that area because we know we're catching the wrongly positioned traders at the time. So these two charts set it up, and that's the easiest way to trade the black or white chart. You break inside or outside of the red or green line, look for the first retracement. You see this black line on the white chart, that's the last level of the retracement where it can go down to. So it had plenty of room to go down in the retracement, it was still a buy. The last level is you look at market delta, left to right analysis. This is not the setup chart, this is the execution chart. What market delta does, it shows us the major buy imbalance between the bid and the ask on buyers versus sellers. So it's showing you that how many buyers are on the buy side, committed to the buy side, versus how many sellers are committed to the sell side. So at the point of inflection on the retracement at the control point, which we know to take a buy retest because we're in an up mild uptrend, and we had a breakout retest on HVA, we know that traders know that I'm looking for a positive market delta. So positive market delta is a close of the green bar. Now once that closes green, you can open your position up at the next open of the next bar. Always, no matter what market you're trading, your stop loss is going to be two ticks below that swing low. Whatever market delta you get in, your stop is going to be two ticks below that swing low. And that is going to be our hard stop, no matter what. We do not risk more than two ticks in any market above or below the swing after market delta entry. So once market delta closed green, now if you look, I have it color coded. So the green matches my numbers below. Green, green, red, red. So if you see a major number come out, it's over 200 is the one on crude off my five sim Renko. We use Renko bars. I do not use tick bars since I developed my own proprietary Renko bar. I don't use volume bars. I sure as heck don't use range bars with market delta. They don't work very well at all. And I don't use minute bars. Those are really, really bad with market delta because they're very lagging. I use a proprietary Renko bar that we give you guys on your own charts or you can view them in the room. So once it turned positive market delta, look at the number. 380. 380 is over 200. What does that tell us? I got a major buy imbalance at a major control point and flushing point. So not only am I on the most volume that's traded in the session, I consider after midnight the session, I've got a major market delta of 380 telling me I got a major buy imbalance. Now, do I need to have 380? Can it be like 199? Yes. 150? Yes. It just lets you know that you're getting a major buy imbalance at an inflection point. The most important is a color change of showing there's a buy imbalance or a red imbalance. The key is that, but if it has a big imbalance of 380, you know you're in a sweet spot for a nice trade on the first test. Then after we enter and have our stop place, we got to know where to scale. I have symmetry dots that are on this white chart. They're red and they're, they're, they're blue and they're red. And I use those to scale contracts. The hardest part with this system, you ask a lot, we have a lot of traders that trade inside this room and outside this room. Uh, so traders that don't even log in to crude and gold, they don't even log in that trade the DAX and so on. We have several traders outside this room that trade on the markets, but they do the same thing. What they're trying to do is what I'm trying to teach them uh, the exits are the most difficult with this system. The entries are not the most difficult because if you're in an uptrend, we simply look for a rotation outside of market profile, retest within a couple ticks, and then we look for a positive market delta. Very simple. It's not very hard to understand that. So what is difficult with trading that I've found over the years, 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 and years since the uh, late, uh, early 90s and late 80s when we first started doing this is that is exits are, are the hardest part. So we have to make sure we reduce risk. The one thing that you and I do not know, we, we know where volume profile is. That's the most volume is traded. That's going to be a high inflection point. We know if we break outside of HVA and retest in an uptrend, that's a big inflection point. We know if we're in a downtrend, we break outside of LVA and, and hit it like we did the last two days. They gave us two giant trades yesterday and Monday, two giant sells. We know if we do that, we're great trades, but we don't know where to get out. So we have to, we, we don't know how far it's going to run. So we have to scale. I use the symmetry dots to scale 50% of the positions. So just like this, if it comes within two texts of symmetry, 
there's two ways to do it. A lot of you traders use a 10 tick target and get out, which is fine. But if you are not out of a position, let's say you're doing six contracts, if you come within two ticks of my symmetry dots, you're going to be on three contracts. You're going to scale 50%. Because look what just happened. See how it came all the way down and now broke the original entry? If you rode that all the way up and rode it all the way back down, you just lost on the position. It just took your stop out two ticks below the swing low. That's not smart money management, is it? So what I do is I use scaling to reduce risk, and that's why I develop the symmetry dots. The symmetry dots are absolutely gorgeous on scaling. On hard trend days, which this is not a hard trend day, on hard trend days like yesterday and the day before, my goal, if I get short here on a break rotation retest, if I get short on a break rotation retest right here, my goal is to get to the third set of symmetry dots. Scale 50% at the first, scale 75% at the second, and try to get all the way down to the third set. It should be right around a $700 plus trade on trend days. Both of them hit easily the last couple of days. Very easy, broke retest, easy 70 plus ticks, easy 70 plus ticks, one directional. All right, if you're in chop days, which is more of a non-trending non, non day, right? More flat, because remember I said we usually trend three, chop two. We're in a very small uptrend, so you're gonna bat a lot of singles. So what I want you to do when you're batting singles is like this is a single trade, you know, the entry was 76, got up to almost 94, just under 94. So that's a single, right? I, I want you to go break even plus one, break even plus one after you enter, after your first target hits, because this can happen, all right? Because we're not going to trend every day. Every market does not trend every day. So we always put ourselves in a position to win by A, letting market profiles set the trade up with overall trend direction. If I trend up, I'm looking for a break, retest outside a profile. All right, with positive market building. If I'm trending down, break retest the last couple of days, break retest low value area, and then we try to get short. And like I said, read that PDF and it'll help you understand. I got several examples on what I like to look at first. You gotta read that PDF. You have to do it. If you're gonna make any sense of this, you gotta make sure you understand it because this is a rule-based system. Once you know the rules, then like a lot of these traders, it takes a half of a nano of a second to understand what they're buying and selling every day, okay? So make sure we understand that.